Smiling Kevin de Hay, McCurgeon, Smiling Kevin de Hay. A smiling Kevin de Hay, McCurgeon, Smiling Kevin de Hay. So, Ruth, uh, we are here in Laxa and Laxi at the Institutes today. We're almost towards the end of Koosh now. There's a lot going on in here. Just describe what's happening today for us. Well, it's a sort of pop-in event, really, by the Institute in Laxi, an underness in Manx. Um, and it's over two floors. So there's a hall upstairs and a hall downstairs. And we've got a mixture of language organisations with information about things like events and lessons that they do and other things that they organise as well as other things like Manx language crafts to buy and there's also food and drink, the stories um, on the half hour every hour for children in Manx. Hello, what's the look? Do it, do it! Oh, hello! Tell your a fly, eat five ruffalo as cake. Hutch and snap to the trouble, there's Ren and Beer Cove. And El Al Orans as the Nina Garofalo. And there's games and activities for kids and big kids to take part in as well. So there's all sorts of things going on. And at two o'clock, we're going to present the Londaire Award. And the Londaire Award means lantern. And it's to, uh, to basically recognise people who are shining a light on and for the Manx language. Which is very important. And there are more and more doing that every year, aren't there? They really are. Like, more and more people learning and more and more people um, shouting about Manx as well um, and supporting it. And that's really important to just get the word out. And this is really a bit of an outreach exercise as well here because we're telling people about Manx, we're telling about the organisations and what they do and helping people understand the difference and showing people that they can get involved with Manx at any part in their life, any age and, you know, whether they've just moved over or whether they've been here all their lives, that's really important. I've seen lots of new faces today, so that's great. And tell us a bit about some of the events so far, what, what's been happening this past week and how well attended have they been? It's been all sorts. Um, there's been things like pop-up Gale Talk um, events, um, which is like where you get pop-up Manx speaking conversation and we kind of took over a section of Noah there was like no bake house there was 20 people in one area we had to keep getting more and more chairs which was nice and they had things like pop-up beginner Manx lessons in Henry Bloom Noble Library but also evening events so last night um, on Friday night there was an event called Krunyak Fananaka Shunach and that was organised by Unkrunya the inter-Celtic festival that happens here in the summer oh there's a story just finished <laughs> getting a nice round of applause there <laughs> and um, that was a lovely event because um, it was an opportunity for people to get up and have a go at some really, really informal competitions and really, really nice. Um, and so that was in Peel. And there's song workshops tomorrow as well. So Christmas song workshops. I've got 25 people signed up for the first one and about 15 for the second one. So I'm really pleased. Um, and there's, oh, there's been loads of stuff going on, really. Yeah, it's been great. It's been lovely. And then talks through the Manx language and talks about Manx in English. English, you know, there's been lots going on. So with regards to the Koosh then, uh, the, the festival, I mean, I know obviously it comes to an end this weekend for this year, but I'm presuming then it's just back on the wagon to start prepping for next year. Absolutely, yeah. Next year's dates are the 1st to the 5th of November 2023, and anyone can put on a Koosh event. So I've actually made a stall downstairs, an information stand, which says basically how the Koosh works, and explains that it's coordinated by me, but it's a group effort. I mean, it doesn't all happen um, with one person. That just wouldn't happen um, I'd be dead <laughs> I'd be on the floor um, it's a massively like uh, you know everyone works together all these different organisations to make it happen um, but I coordinate it and then basically if people want to put on an event they just let me know by the 1st of May and they can email me manxlanguage at culturebannon.im or they can ring me and you can find my contact details on the Culture Bannon website so you know we really try and make it as inclusive as possible um, and then the yeah the next year next year's dates are 1st to the 5th of November so it is an annual thing that happens so keep an eye out for that there's loads that goes on all year round though of course and uh, if anyone would like to start learning Manx there's so many opportunities and different ways of doing that isn't there there is yep you can learn via different methods on the internet you can learn on things like the podcast Gilgach which is sort of a little podcast um, sound bites which about 7 minutes or so each there's 101 of those so you can really work your way through come along to a live lesson in person or on Zoom. Um, there's all sorts of things, pop-up conversation things happen as well as as well as books and all sorts of resources. Head to learnmanx.com for all you need to know um, and there's more and more being added all the time so it's very exciting. So I've bumped into James Franklin uh, from Culture Bannon of course 
And James, you were at the uh, Colotus, the conversation, on Ty Bairn, the White House, the other night, and you were saying it was lovely because there were even people who'd come over from the UK and wanted to speak Manx. Yeah, absolutely fearless, brilliant people who were quite early on in their learning journey and they'd um, obviously like driven with excitement for the language and they'd chosen to come over this week and to come into the pub and try Manx in the wild. And it was just amazing because it takes a lot of bravery to speak a language like this in the wild. And of course, for those people in England, they'll only be doing it over the Zoom or over the internet or something like that. And then suddenly to go into the pub and it's full of these Manx speakers speaking Manx. And these people did it and it was just so so ace and it's so ace that the language can inspire people like that and people can be so inspired to come to the Isle of Man and do it it's yeah it's great I suppose it does beg the question why did they where did this come from their interest in Manx well it was really interesting chatting to him in that there's one particular fellow I was talking to he was saying that he doesn't have Manx family he's just he's has a European language and then he was just came to the Isle of Man on holiday and he was like, oh, this is interesting. I might dip my toe in the water. And, you know, one little step and followed and another step and another step. And here he is investing so much of his time and energy and his time off work to come to the Isle of Man and do it properly. Oh, fantastic. Which is one of the great reasons why the couche is necessary in a way to provide these opportunities for people. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so nice as a Manx learner, as in someone from the Isle of Man, on the Isle of Man, learning Manx, to see these people from the outside, as it were, getting it so much and it's suddenly realised what a privilege we have to be here and have this amazing opportunity to do it not just this week but all the time and it's it's great to kind of reset and think yeah let's do this let's do this manxing let's do it and you've obviously been learning yourself since being at Culture Van Inn, so uh, how's it going with your Manx? Would you say you're fluent now? <laughs> uh, anyone who knows me in Manx circles would uh, not say I'm fluent by a long way. But um, it's lovely to be in an environment where, through the school, because my kids are at the Bun School Gilgach, and I go to Manx lessons outside of Culture Van Inn, of course, and I go to Manx conversational and meet-up groups, and it's great to be a part of this community where... I can feel like I'm progressing in this friendly, encouraging environment. And it's nice to feel myself growing as a person through the language and in so many ways. It's great. Hello, I'm Felicity Wood from Felicity Wood Designs. And Felicity, you're here with your beautiful arts and crafts table. Just explain a little bit about what you do and what we've got here. Um, So I've got a lot of um, handmade pottery and one of my favourite things to do is find um, beautiful Manx phrases and just incorporate the Manx phrases in a really sort of subtle style so that you get a really nice piece of um, artwork that incorporates Manx language without it being too daunting. And how popular is this? Because it seems like there's more and more items that are, are cropping up with Manx language on them. Um, So I'm always really surprised that when I go to an event like this and um, put my work out, um, people are like, oh, if you did one that said this, um, then we'd totally buy it. So you sort of take all this research. Two more days is a really good day for that sort of research as well. And then make things that people have gone, oh, I'll really buy that. And it turns out they actually do. So, yeah, it's been quite sort of fun listening to the feedback that people give us and going, oh, okay, well, if you think if you think people would like to have that Manx word written on something we can definitely give that a go and yeah it's gone from there really and it's definitely multiplied and so what are some of the most popular items and most popular phrases um, the Guru uh, thank you cards we sell an awful lot of and Guru mugs I did a card a couple of years ago that incorporated Manx names so for all those people of a Manx name who had never got their name on a badge or a mug when they were a child um, and that concept grew quite exponentially so now I have a tea towel with I think it's 72 different Manx names on and gift wrapping paper with all of the Manx names on so that's been really popular and and then also um, some Manx calligraphy greetings cards so things like good luck um, new houses birthday cards especially are very popular um, retirement cards wedding mm-hmm. cards so and yeah. of course it's fast approaching the festive season as well so there's there's got to be some festive things in here too Yes, so I do love making ceramic Christmas decorations and things that say Nolik Genel on. It's really exciting, actually. People tend to enjoy buying those to send to relatives in the UK or people who used to live on the Isle of Man or um, family that have got Manx connections but live in Germany or Canada. So 
um, a lot of the Nollet Gennel decorations tend to be sent off Ireland, which I think is like a really nice story. I'm Mary Wade and I'm 13 years old. Tama Enum, Mary Wade as Tammy, True Jake Blinder Aish. I'm Matilda Watson and I'm also 13 years old. Tammy Matilda Watson as Tammy Tree Jack Blinton Deish. In the sack. How long have you been speaking Manx? Vosh Vami, like, Mush Tree Vami Golgus, like, uh, preschool is from a vomig to Kinjak Gosh Law Gilg Rom as that, like, Begin as Estravagant's primary school v. Um, what the gold project begins at Gilg, so fashion latte versus from much care. I've been speaking Manx since I was about maybe three or four because I went to the Bunskol Gilgak and and then my mum started learning Manx. So we start so we spoke to each other a little bit and then I learned it all through primary school. I started learning Manx in when I was about five or four because I I went to school. I was pretty much the youngest one there because I was born so late and my parents wanted me to go to the Bun School because I was so small so I started learning Manx at around yeah, four or five and then my dad started learning it as well so we spoke that together. That's the thing, so you get to speak it with your family, So, but how much outside your family do you speak Manx? Well, I speak it to my friends and um, our current head teacher. We are teaching her Manx a little bit. She'll meet us in the corridor and tell us more am I or fast am I. So once you go up to high school, there's less Manx talk. Less Manx, less Manx yeah. yeah, which is a shame. But we do get to have lessons in Manx. So for religious education, we have switched to Manx. So our, uh, so Jen Hampton teaches us religious education, which is very nice. Amazing. What about you, Matilda? Do you use it much now in, in school? or? Uh, well, we do lessons in QE2 in Manx, but... We just sort of speak Manx or like with people or with just people we know. Why do you want to keep speaking Manx then? Because it's just a fun thing to do. It keeps the heritage and the history alive, and it's just it's just altogether a fun thing to really do. What are you, Mary? Um, well, I like to keep the heritage alive, and it's very it's a quite a nice language to speak, and I think it's a bit that like I love about myself that I can speak a different language. And does it make you feel sort of more connected to the island? Or? Yeah, definitely. Along with, um, also, we, me and Matilda, we do Manx dancing as well. That also helps us connect with the island. So just those both, like, those both two things connected are just very nice to do together. And what do you think about Koosh, then? Koosh is really good. Very tiring, but really fun. How much have you been involved? What have you been doing this week? A lot. I can't, I don't, oh, just a lot. I can't really count. <laughs> what about you, Ray? What have you um, done? Well, me... And Matilda and my friends, we have started the Manx Youth Committee a few weeks ago. And ever since, we've been coming to Koosh things or just little Manx events. And we've been collecting jokes in Manx to make a Manx book. And we've been helping sell Manx books and stuff. We've just been running little stalls. Wow, how many people are involved in the Manx Youth Committee? Well, it's me, Matilda, our friend Kinley, who lives in Port St Mary, and every now and then Frank, Jockin and Karen Stitt will tag along as well. Excellent. So what are your sort of hopes for the committee then? What do you want to do with it in the future? Well, so far we're just a little stall that like, you know, goes to all these Manx things and, again, does all the jokes and stuff. But we want to expand, so we want to make sure that youth... Like people in like younger than that can't be in the Cheshire and Parenting can help keep the Manx language alive. So I'm Jen. Um, I work in various places around the island with Manx um, at QE2, teaching Manx, teaching subjects through Manx, um, and teaching at the Bun School as well at the Bun School Gilga. And we we're just hearing actually from one of your students who's talking about how lovely it is to be able to carry on speaking Manx in high school. Um, so tell me a little bit about the skimmy then. Ooh, so the skimmy covers lots of ground really they go to every single primary school on the island teach children from years five and six sometimes taken in year four as well and just introducing them to manx gives them a great grounding and then they then have the option to carry on in high school if they wanted to year seven eight nine ten eleven and maybe taking their gcse through manx as well so it really does span um a great part of their schooling as well and how long have you actually been speaking Manx for yourself, Jen? Ooh, uh, well, my dad, I can remember my dad learning Manx when I was younger, and then I 
just kind of gradually picked it up really formally probably when I was in my 20s and started taking classes then yeah and so seeing the young people continue with their minds as they get into high school that must be really encouraging because that is basically sort of creating the future for Gilg in a way isn't it yeah, I mean, the children that have come from the Bunskol Gilga then gone to high school and continue to have the lessons through Manx, I think it helps keep them within that world in a way, and it means that they can keep coming back to it. Sometimes they do drift away a little bit, but then it's always got that link going on that they can always come back to it and give them that ownership of the language. And one of the things that must be so helpful from a, an educational and teaching point of view is the fact there's so much literature now which has been translated. I mean, I was looking, Le Petit Prince, The Little Prince is now in Gilg as well. All these different books that you can make use of. Yeah, it's lovely. Uh, I think it's nice that they can see that there's stuff around. Mm-hmm. They might not pick up every single book in Manx and read it, but the fact that they know they exist, that it's normal for books to be in Manx, and the fact that loads of stuff is accessible on the internet as well, all sorts of apps and things that you can use, just makes it super accessible. <laughs> Um, so, Ginu and Maje of Hilg as um, Kamosus of Hilg. A shen Joni Farragher, Alta Jim Kier as Feed as the Fenodary Distillery. So, Jintamai Shuish. Lunde is awarded annually. Lunde means lantern and it's to award people who are shining a light on or for the Manx language. And so Jeeban, the Manx Language Network, decide who's going to win the Lunde every year and then it's awarded at the Koosh Manx Language Festival every November. And this year we decided there'd be two winners. Joni Farragher, member of the House of Keys for Douglas East. She's been using Manx in the Keys a lot um, and she's really, really passionate about the Manx language and the Isle of Man and she's feeling inspired to do more as well she was really pleased to win it and the other winners are the Fenodary Distillery so they're up in Ramsey and they've got in their team quite a lot of people who are learning Manx and um, Manx speakers as well and just yeah they've got, they're really passionate about using Manx as well and they're feeling again inspired to use more on their products and it's a really great way if you use Manx on your products of showing provenance yeah so give them another round of applause I'm Tiffany Karish from the Fenodary Distillery. Hi, I'm Joni Farragher, MHK for Douglas East. Very exciting day for you both. You've both just been awarded Londo, which is it's, and it's two this year, so it's a really special year. Joni, tell me a little bit about your use of Manx. Okay, so um, it's actually largely thanks to Ruth, who gave a completely inspirational presentation to Tim Ward members about incorporating Manx into both day-to-day language as well as more parliamentary formal speech. And that, like I say, that presentation was so inspirational. Um, It really gave me a sense of the part that Manx plays in our culture and our history and um, how, how, how we all feel about our island. And so I started looking up common phrases and how to pronounce them using culture vanin and just doing small things like topping and tailing my emails with Manx and I have to say I have loved it absolutely genuinely loved it it's um it has actually enriched the last year and my time in Timwald so you know to Koosh and Ruth and everybody who is championing the Manx language Guru Mai Mora to thank you so much Oh, and do you, how, were the, how well received was it by the other members? Do you think it'll inspire any of the others? Yeah, absolutely, it, it has. Um, the president, who's Lawrence Skelly, uses it quite a lot. Uh, obviously, the clerk of Timwald uh, uh, reads out a lot of his parts in Manx. Um, the, but the members who were there, all of them use Manx. So, you know, I, I would only say to Ruth, maybe come along again and see if we can get some more members to do it because, you know she is a very inspirational presenter and the way that she puts the information across it really um, made me think this is really important and I want to do it. She's a very good teacher isn't she and would you do you think you use it outside of work at all or? Um, I think I say it's just very common expressions like good morning, good afternoon, thank you. I'll often drop that into a if if I know that the other person is is will recognise it then yeah I do yeah and it's been wonderful to be here today and to hear people speaking fluent Manx you know that language to me it's it's so it's so poetic and evocative Mm -hmm. that it really gives me a sort of sense of of our uniqueness so yeah yeah I'm going to use it more definitely oh you're into such gender and Tiffany you know for not even by the 
the name. You've been so supportive of the Manx language from the very beginning with your brand, haven't you? Yes, we have tried to be. Um, yeah, the, the Fnodri Distillery has always been about using our products to, to promote the, the island on a wider to a wider audience to, to the UK and, and beyond. Um, it's very important that um, what we do can conveys a real true sense of, of the Isle of Man and, and Manx culture and, and, and our heritage and our wonderful folklore stories that obviously we're using through our branding story. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's an incredibly important part of what we're doing and something that we're hoping to build on more and more now that we've launched the, the whiskey um, in the last couple of days, which will also help to spread the word of the Isle of Man to, to those markets that we, we've not reached before. And what does it mean to you to, to be announced as a Londo, as a lantern for the language? Well, that came as a really lovely surprise. Um, it was um, really, really nice to, to feel that what we're doing has been noticed. And I think it's going to be so encouraging encouraging to us now to, to keep doing what we're doing and to expand on that and to do more. Um, our social media following is now quite quite big, I'm, I'm pleased to say, and we're, we're getting really lovely um, responses from people who are engaging in what we're doing um, on the Manx side of things. We've got um, several Manx speakers in our team now, and that's really inspiring the rest of us to um, up the ante and, and try and um, have a few conversations around the place, just very low-key, fun stuff, but it, it's bringing the language to life for us at work and that is also helping us engage with our customers and, and giving us a real point of uniqueness and something special as well. Studies have shown that the use of Scottish Gaelic on your products it's hugely beneficial to the economy and you can say the same for the Isle of Man it shows provenance you think about Fenodri and how they've built up their brand it's, it's brilliant isn't it and they're using folklore and Manx language elements and all of this so um, two very worthy winners and there was so many people we could have picked from we actually did sit and discuss you know God, you know, all these different people who are using Manx new use of Manx as well um, and we'd just like to say to everybody who's you know, shining a light on Manx. Um, thank you, Guru Mai Moyo.